Hi there, YouTube viewers. So if you're anything like me, you really like Valheim. And if you're also anything like me, you're poor as fuck and you can't afford to be hosting a server or rather you're a cheapskate and you don't want to. Now, luckily, there's this amazing thing called self-hosted servers. And if you have a port forwarded router, you've probably dabbled in this before. However, if you've ever played Valheim, you will know that sometimes finding particular locations can be a pain in the ass. And as a result, it's really helpful to have the seed for the world. That way you can, you know, look at it and uh, consult it if you get really stuck or if you can't find the merchant or stuff like that. Anyway, so my friend and I had this dilemma of using the dedicated server. You can't really use console commands. I don't know why. It, like, I own the server. I should be able to run console commands, but I digress. Anyway, trying to find the seed is harder than trying to break into Fort Knox. I don't know what kind of cybersecurity agents work over at Iron Gate that made Valheim, but holy shit, this crap is locked up so tight, you will not be able to find it on your own. And there is no good tutorial on the internet for how to do this. The only quote-unquote good tutorial... I still had to figure out on my own with my friend's help. And we didn't really know what we were doing. We just kind of fumbled until we figured it out. So I am making this tutorial so that anybody in 2024 or beyond can go back and do this because otherwise it is borderline impossible to figure it out on your own. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Okay. So what you're going to need is a PC, obviously, and you're going to need either a dedicated physical server unit or one running on your computer. Some people can do, uh, if they have enough RAM, they can run the server actually on their main computer that they're also using to play Valheim. And that's completely fine. You just need to have enough RAM resources and your CPU needs to be powerful enough. So if you're considering doing this long-term and you wanna have the server constantly going without having to worry about the power budget of running an expensive gaming computer, I'd highly recommend getting a separate, just cheap desktop and using that as your dedicated physical server unit and just sticking, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM in it or whatever, and that should do perfectly fine for what we're attempting to do. If you need help with that, let me know, and I can uh, set up a separate tutorial on kind of how to get that set up. You're also gonna need a running Valheim instance, which implies, you know, you need to own Valheim uh, on Steam. You need to be able to play it. And you're also gonna need to have installed the Steam provided dedicated Valheim server. That looks like this, by the way, if you're unfamiliar. It uh, installs with Valheim through Steam. And obviously, if you're going to have this running, you need to have your router port forwarded so that people can connect to your public IP and you can have this running permanently. And you also need a constant instance of the server actually running. If you need help with that, I'm going to show you here in the tutorial. You're also going to need Cheat Engine 7.3. Because of how ridiculously stupid they make it to find the seed on this game, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to reach into the memory and actually find the address of the map seed and decode it essentially and then we'll have to use that on a world lookup website and we can go ahead and confirm you know that's our seed or that's not our seed anyway let's go ahead and get started so the first thing you're going to need is cheat engine 7.3 it looks like this what we're going to do to get that is you're going to go to the link that i have in the description and it's going to bring you to this website on GitHub. Do not use Cheat Engine 7.5. Do not use Cheat Engine 7.0. I've seen several Reddit threads where people say to use these two. They don't work. They just crash instantly. Or they just don't work once you install them. I don't know why. I don't get paid enough to know why. I'm just a guy, okay? So we're going to be using Cheat Engine 7.3 because that's what I used. That's what worked. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. So what you do, scroll down to 7.3. And scroll down until you see the assets right here. It'll probably look like this. It'll be collapsed. You just open it up and you grab Cheat Engine 73.exe and install it wherever you want. And once you've done that, you just go to there and you run the installer. The only thing that you have to know that's a little bit different about this installer than other installers is just that it's going to offer you some like extra stuff. You can just skip it. So whenever you hit OK, it's going to be right here on the next screen. It's going to say RAV Endpoint Protection Elite. I don't know what any of this shit is. I don't care what it is. You just hit skip all, run through the rest of the installer, and launch the uh, Cheat Engine 7.3. Once you launch it, it's going to look like this. And now this is where we actually do the painstaking BS that is finding the seeds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch Valheim. So go ahead and launch your dedicated server. And launch Valheim as well. What you're going to do then is, you know, select your character, join your server. Now, once you put in your password and join your server, I have two things to clarify. First of all, some people are going to say, do this with the uh, console. 
This does not work. Do not listen to anybody that says this. This is how your seed is stored locally on your computer. But if you're using a dedicated server, then this is not going to give you the map you're looking for. It is a waste of your time. Don't fall for this. Don't do that. So what we're going to do to actually find the seed is we're going to go ahead and tab out. And once we're in Cheat Engine 7.3 and we've got Valheim running in the background, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into Cheat Engine 7.3. Now, this software has a ton of tools that are extremely helpful. I don't know how to use them, and it's irrelevant for this tutorial, so I'm not going to be showing you what everything does. We're only concerned with finding the seed. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Open Process, and you're going to select Valheim. Not the server, just the instance itself of your game. So Valheim, you're going to open that. And then you're going to go to Mono. You're going to activate the Mono features, and then you're going to dissect the Mono. Now what this is going to do is it's going to show you all the classes that are in use right now by your game. So what we need to do is we need to find a certain class called world. So if you go to search, sorry, search, find class, and you type in world with a capital W, it's going to show you some different things over here. We are looking for one that is just called world. And if you're having trouble finding it, this is sorted in alphabetical order. So if you do manage to find the, uh, the class that this is stored in, just go ahead and um, you know look through the alphabetical order until you find the letter that you're looking for so in which case we're looking for w and here it is now once you've got here you're going to right click and you're going to find instances of this class and what this is going to do is it's going to pop up a separate uh window and this is going to show you all of the instances of the worlds in your valheim now keep in mind if you have several single player worlds there will be a lot more instances here Yesterday, I don't know why it's not doing it now, but yesterday when my friend and I did this, I had like 30 instances of this stuff. Now, these are just guesses. This is not necessarily exactly what, um, you know, it's looking for. Only one of these is going to be correct. Now, you may be asking, what the heck does that mean? I don't know how to tell if one of them is correct. Well, let me give you some pointers to kind of get you along so that you can figure out which one is it. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to go ahead and open up the drop down menu. And what you're going to do is look for in world version and you want to make sure this isn't some crazy ridiculous number the numbers that you're looking for are like one or two anything that's zero or negative is probably going to be a bogus entry and not what you're looking for so if you really want to test it though what you do is you find the m seed name this is the memory address where we're looking for the seed so what you're going to do is right click and copy the selection you're also going to double click on it to open up this memory viewer. And now that you've copied the selection, you're going to right click on here and you're going to go to the address. So just paste it in with control V or however you want to do it. Get rid of all the text before this specific numbered memory location and hit OK. Now what this is going to do is it's going to show you the memory location. Now what we're looking for is a combination of letters and numbers right in here. It's offset by one hexadecimal. So right here is what we're going to look for. If you just see a bunch of periods or a bunch of random symbols, it's probably a bogus location and this is not correct. So as you can see, we don't have a memory location here. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next class instance. So world version two, this looks fine. Let's go ahead and give it a try same process now that looks a lot better so as you can see we have a 10 character string here which if you're not a computer programmer a string is just a combination of letters and numbers and what this is is a seed so you can see we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten letters right there so what we're going to do is we're going to take this memory or sorry this specific seed and we're going to write it down real quick. So I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. So we're gonna write it down. So this is lowercase n, capital L, lowercase b, capital Y, I, eight, whoops, W, D, W, U. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy this specific seed. This is the seed for whatever world of the instance you're looking at. This may or may not be the world you are currently in. Keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do is go to this website that I will also have linked in the description. You're welcome. And we're going to go up here and we're going to paste it in. And then when you hit go, it's going to generate the world for that specific seed. And as you can see, this is my world. If you give it a couple seconds, it'll show you where you spawn. 
which for me is going to be right here. Okay, so there we go. I was able to go ahead and enable and disable some of this stuff. So as you can see, that's the spawn point. And if I turn over to my game and look at my map, you can actually see that that's accurate. This is the little pond. This is the mountain biome over there. And then this is the spawn location. So this is indeed the world map that we, we are looking for. And if we go back to here, we can actually enable or disable anything that we want. So if you're having trouble finding the trader, boom, there you go. You can see exactly where they're at. Keep in mind that traders, once you visit the first location, you cannot find them in any other location. It deletes them from all of the other ones. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know there's they added new traders. I haven't played this game in a while. Um, on top of that, you can also use this to find dungeons. So if you're trying to find some crypts in the swamp, for example, you can use this to scout out which ones has the most crypts. So that way you can go get some raw iron, etc., etc. Now, if you want to download a picture of this map for future use, you could either save the seed and just look it up again, or you can actually download the map. And as you can see, this is the map with the markers that I enabled. So if you want to turn all of them on, then you can just, you know, enable this and then download it and boom there you go now you can find all the different spawn locations for the different bosses oh that's nice bone mass and yaglith are like right next to each other right here that's very convenient anyway that's how you find the world seed for your valheim dedicated server um if you guys need help please reach out to me in the comments i don't know how much i can help specifically with this step of the tutorial because i only know very minimally how to use cheat engine 7.3 but that being said if you can't find the seed in these memory locations, you're probably just looking in the wrong spot. Make sure that you have selected world and you have selected M seed name and you use that to go to the address of that specific address after you delete this before the arrow. And that will more than likely give you what you're looking for. But like I said, if you have any problems, reach out to me in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you guys so much. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope you guys have a wonderful time with your Viking selves in your Valheim world. Take care and y'all have a good one.